How does it come about that by faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did? How does it come about that Abel's sacrifice of the crops he's grown from the ground is more acceptable to God than Cain's sacrifice of the firstborn of his flocks? Is it because God was a vegetarian and is like the other meat? You will come across that. You may come across that with some of the people who've set up in Tansa. So I read it. Well, that sort of thing gets suggested. It doesn't fit with scripture where God tells Peter to rise, kill and eat, or where the Lord catches, cooks and eats a fish breakfast with his disciples on the beach. Where the entire Old Testament sacrificial system makes provision for the Levites from the meat of the temple offerings. So no, it's not because God's a vegetarian, although that is certainly allowed as a matter of personal choice. We don't judge each other on the basis of what we eat. Why don't we judge each other on the basis of what we eat? Because the Bible tells me so. Because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> As the Bible tells me so. Well, the Bible tells me so. Well, it, it's, it's central to Christian theology that you don't do that. Colossians chapter 2. Do you know that verse about having disarmed the powers and authorities? He, that is the Lord Jesus, made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in the cross. Do you know that verse? Crucial verse. You know that verse. Because you come up against people who are into all that stuff. And you might need that verse in your armory to be able to... You know, walk with God through, through encounters with that sort of thing. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, verse 16 in Colossians 2, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. Central to the cross is this living with a clear conscience on matters of personal choice. And here's one. Whether I'm a vegetarian or not should be a matter of no consequence to you. If I come to you and I say... You're a Christian, you should be a vegetarian. Oh, whoa, 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 cross. Back to the cross, Colossians 2, 15 and 16. Because as it says there, as Paul says, these are a shadow of the things that would have come. The reality is found in Christ. It's a cross thing. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, sets the conscience free where God has not spoken. So what's this about in Genesis chapter 4 then? The trouble with Cain and his offering... Is the burden of his guilt and his sin prevented his sacrifice from being acceptable to God? The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you don't do what's right, sin's crushing at your door. He desires to have you, but you must master it. Genesis 4, 6 and 7. What's the problem then with Cain's offering? The problem with Cain's offering is Cain's sin. Now, you've got to bear this in mind. Human beings find it a lot easier to do ritual than faith. Don't they? Don't we? External observance rather than Faithfulness of heart and life. I guess the classic Old Testament text on this is, is Hosea chapter 6. Have you read Hosea recently? Hosea is a great book. If, if you're feeling you're getting a lot of Psalms and John at the moment in your readings, go and have a look at Hosea, right? Because Hosea is a cracking book. So understanding of human nature is God. What God seeks from his people is the sacrifice of faith. And what these people have done in Hosea chapter 6, well, look, here's God's despair. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Isaiah 6, verse 4. Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears, as it did yesterday morning. Did you see it early on? Therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. My judgments flash like lightning upon you. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. Like Adam, they've broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. What these people had done was to wander from God. Bad enough mistake to start with. But then they'd made the compound error of wandering from God and assuming it would be easy to get back. And we had a horrible illustration in the course of the last week, right here. Of going into something, assuming it would be easy to get back. Now, you almost hesitate to raise the issue, but there's a pit not far from here. And a bunch of guys, last week, went into the mouth of that mine. They walked in with their own free will. 
And they made that choice. I'm not saying that choice was wrong at all. It's just an illustration of the fact that sometimes it can be very easy to get into something assuming it's going to be easy to get back. And you know what happened. And there was an inrush of water into that mine. And you couldn't get back. And these people in Hazir have wandered from God, which is culpable. And they've assumed that it's going to be easy to get back. Oh, let's return to the Lord. He, he's in the business of forgiving. As Catherine the Great said, you know, the good God will forgive. That's his trade. Bon Dieu pardonnera. C'est son métier. Yeah? Come, let's return to the Lord. He's torn us in pieces, but he will heal us. He's injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he'll revive us. On the third day, he'll restore us that we may live in his presence. Let's acknowledge the Lord. Let's press on to acknowledge him. Surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He'll come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. And God says, what can I do with you? Your love's like an enemy. Those people in Azir thought they'd got it down with God, they thought they were on top of it. They thought when they'd gone through their motions, carried out their rituals, offered their sacrifices, but never engaged their sinful hearts, all would be well. And here's Cain, and there's Abel, and the difference is immense. For, says God in Isaiah 6, 6, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. Here's the thing that makes sacrifice acceptable. By faith, Abel was commended as righteous when he made his offering to God. There's no point going without doing sacrifice or having it rough for your service to God if that sacrifice isn't initiated, driven, and seen through by faith in Him, trust in Him. Here's the thing that makes sacrifice acceptable He was commended as righteous because He mixed His sacrifice with faith. 